As members of the Irish Army Ranger Wing prepared for another day at sea on the 26th of September 2023, they would not have expected to make the international headlines by the end of it. They had been summoned by the team on board the Ellie William Butler Yates, an offshore patrol ship that had been shadowing the 190-meter-long MV Matthew, which had traveled from Curaçao via Guiana. In the fury of autumnal gale-force winds, they descended from the helicopter as the giant behemoth of a cargo ship beneath them pitched and rolled in the storm swells of the Irish Sea. Suspended by a single, slender, repelling rope, the soldiers boarded the vessel, ready to use their automatic weapons should the need arise. Their mission was clear, seize control of the 32-meter-wide ship and its hidden cargo of more than two tons of cocaine, and in doing so, unravel the nefarious strands of international drug trafficking stretching from the jungles of Colombia to the dark corners of Dubai. It took the commandos less than 10 minutes to capture the cargo ship, which was making a desperate attempt to steer out of Irish waters and into international territory after it realized it was being shadowed. Approval was given to storm the vessel after the MV Matthew failed to heed live warning shots fired by the naval team. The seizure lays bare the staggering scale of the cocaine trade and exposes the collaboration between Irish and British gangs and the global menace of outlaw ships that deliver massive consignments of cocaine from South America to Europe. This video will outline the events that led up to this incredible story, another chapter in the relentless battle between major drug cartels and law enforcement over the mass supply of narcotics into Europe. You are watching OCG TV. It would really help us if you could subscribe to the channel. The benefit to you is that you'll be alerted every time we upload a video for your enjoyment. For us, it pushes the profile of the channel in YouTube's algorithm and allows us to produce a higher number of videos for you. We thank you in advance for your support with this. Chapter 1. A Familiar Story The MV Matthew conspiracy is thought to involve two main parties a tight-knit group of Irish, British and European criminals, and the clan Del Golfo of Colombia, a once paramilitary organization that has since transformed into the world's biggest supplier of cocaine. The seizure from the MV Matthew was not a one-off event, but the most recent in a series by police across Europe. It is believed that the network of criminals still collaborates with members within the Kinahan crime group to broker shipments. We've already seen the public dismantling of the so-called European super cartel during Interpol-led Operation Desert Light, in which 49 people were arrested across six European countries, including Dutch-Moroccan Ridwan Tagi, Bosnian Eden Gakkenen, and Chilean Rico Rikelmi Vega, all of whom are thought to have worked with wanted Irishman Daniel Kinahan at one time, supplying one-third of all cocaine trafficked into Europe. Even though these individuals are in custody, they leave behind various people beneath them within their respective organizations. These individuals will have led a certain standard of lifestyle, and the temptation to restart operations will always be there. The network operates a conveyor belt of multi-ton consignments of cocaine into Europe from South America. In July 2023, Customs officials at Rotterdam Port seized more than eight tons, hidden in a consignment of bananas. Prior to this, the same network was smuggling cocaine disguised as charcoal and packed into containers and sent to ports in Britain and Ireland via Holland. The group landed at least two huge consignments already this year, suspected to be through Sligo and Donegal. Bales of cocaine worth 4 million euro were found washed up in Donegal, indicating that a larger consignment had been transferred to a smaller vessel by a cargo ship offshore. Chapter 2. The Master Plan The backstory of MV Matthew is most interesting in itself. It was previously called MV Honman, the name being changed by new owners after its most recent voyage across the South China Sea. On August 1st, it was registered in Panama to Matthew Maritime, a new entity incorporated in the Marshall Islands. Matthew Maritime Inc. claims it is a global logistics company. The company website promotes itself using terms such as working towards a sustainable future and being committed to sustainable development. 
The company also claims their fleet has undertaken 1,200 deliveries and over 1,200 voyages. However, Matthew Maritime is no global leader in shipping. In fact, it has one ship, the Panamanian registered MV Matthew, which it purchased six weeks ago. The website matthewmaritime.com is being hosted by a firm called tasjil.ae who are based in Ras Al Khaimah, a free trade zone near Dubai. The website uses a registration shielding device to mask the name of the person who registered the site. The paper trail, which leads from the MV Matthew to Dubai, will again focus the attention of European police forces on the UAE. The vessel left the port of Willemstad in Curaçao, the Dutch Caribbean island located north of Venezuela, on August 19th. Its stated destination was Gdansk in Poland, though it changed its destination port to Belfast on arrival in European waters. It initially sailed along the coast of Venezuela before spending two weeks moored off the coast of Guiana. It then traveled across the Atlantic, reaching the Canary Islands in mid-September. It is unclear where it collected its shipment of cocaine, but it may have been transported by another boat and later transferred onto the mothership. It next traveled along the coast of Portugal into the Bay of Biscay and the Celtic Sea before arriving in Irish waters on about September 23, where the Irish authorities were waiting. It headed up the Irish Sea on the pretense of traveling to Belfast on Saturday, where it rendezvoused with the Castlemore, a small fishing trawler that had been purchased the night before for cash in Castletown Beer in Cork. Suspiciously, its transponder had been switched off between 2 p.m. and 6 p.m. It was at this juncture that the plan fell apart. The Castlemore ran aground off Wexford. The trawler still remains trapped on the sandbank. The MV Matthew, meanwhile, began to experience engine issues and informed the authorities it would now go to Cork to undergo repair. Last Monday night, it requested assistance from a Coast Guard helicopter reporting that its captain had suffered a heart attack and needed a medical evacuation. The Iranian captain, a 51-year-old man named Sohil Jalveh, was found to be carrying a hold all stuffed with 53,000 euros when searched. The ship was eventually boarded off Ballycotton in East Cork last Tuesday and escorted to the harbour where 2,223 kilograms of pure, uncut cocaine wrapped in black plastic was found inside a lifeboat. The possibility that the Kinahan group had some involvement in the plot was not ruled out by a senior member of Irish Garda, stating that there were no large consignments transiting through Ireland without local criminals being involved. However, it is an easy assertion to cast, and there are various other gangs based in Ireland that have links to South America. Chapter 3 – The Alliance The significance of the MV Matthew seizure should not be judged by its vast size, but rather the global network of criminals it exposed. The cocaine itself was sourced from the Clan de Golfo, which is now South America's largest cartel. The process for them is simple. They sell cocaine to groups of European criminals who pool together resources to buy in bulk. The cartel does not need to organize the transport, just deal with a representative from the buyer's side. Once it's sold, it becomes the responsibility of the purchaser. There is no shared responsibility to get the consignment to its destination because the price it's being sold at is so low. For example, the purchase price of the consignment found aboard MV Matthew was probably around 6.5 million euros, a drop in the ocean compared to the astronomical profits potentially on offer. The cartel sells a kilo of cocaine for between 2 and 5,000 euros, depending on the quantity purchased and availability. When sold to dealers in Dublin and London, its value rises to 70,000 euros per kilo but the value increases by at least a third more when it is mixed with other substances to bulk out the volume. This is why the massive load found on MV Matthew was valued at an eye-watering 157 million euros. The involvement of Kinahan and his cartel, whose members are living openly in Dubai, is based on intelligence supplied by the Colombian Security Services to the Drug Enforcement Administration, which was then relayed to Irish police. The intelligence services believed the Kinahan organization acted as a broker in pulling the shipment together, but also planned to oversee the sale of a large portion of it to an associate in Scotland, who is currently under investigation by the National Crime Agency. 
The telltale signs of Kinahan's involvement are obvious to those familiar with his operations. Matthew Maritime Inc., the company that owns the MV Matthew, was set up in July with an address at Majuro MH96960 on Edgeltech in the Marshall Islands. The company's address matches those of various entities sanctioned by the United States for their involvement in shipping oil for Iran and Venezuela and money laundering for Hezbollah. It was these details, combined with other intelligence, which put the ship on the proverbial radar of the Maritime Analysis and Operations Center, a Lisbon-based multinational drugs agency. Chapter 4. What happens next? There are two areas in which authorities will need to conclude the vessel itself and the personnel on board. In addition to Captain Jelve, other lead crew members have also appeared in court. Ukrainians, Myhalo Gavrik and Vitaly Vlasoy, Iranian Saeed Hassani, and Dutch national Kumali Ozgan were brought amid tight security to Malo District Court where they were each charged in relation to the seizure of the drugs. Investigators are also in the process of interviewing the rest of the MV Matthews' 25-strong crew none of whom have been arrested so far. These interviews will help determine if the MV Matthew was purchased specifically for the purposes of cocaine smuggling, or if the drug were hidden aboard without the knowledge of the owners or crew. The authorities are also now preparing to expedite the sale of the vessel should its owners fail to come forward to prevent incurring maintenance and berthing costs. Given the size of the vessel, if the vessel was to fall into a state of disrepair, then it would become dangerous to the local community. It needs to be maintained while arrangements are being made for it to be bought, sold or salvaged. If the vessel is not claimed by its owners, it is said that the authorities are planning to sell it as quickly as possible before they start accumulating costs for its maintenance. The Irish state has previously incurred substantial losses with berthing fees and maintenance costs following the seizure of ships. Hefty debts were left over after the detention in June 2014 of the MV Shingle at Drogheda Port in County Louth. The seizure of the ship eventually cost the country 13 million euros. The revenue commissioners initially planned to auction the vessel, but had to wait for court proceedings to conclude, which took three years. Irish authorities will want to keep this story a positive one for the state. The apprehension of the drug shipment marks a success for Irish authorities underscoring their capacity to combat illicit activities in their own jurisdiction. But it also serves as a stark reminder of their inability to tackle transnational crime groups without help from international law enforcement agencies. You have been watching OCG TV. Do you think the seizure of this massive consignment will make any impact on the European cartels? And who do you think was behind the shipment? We would be intrigued to know your thoughts. Till next time, goodbye.